Let's do a walkthrough of the Hisense U7H menu to let you know what you can and cannot expect from your settings in this television. Now, since we are working on a television, I think the most important thing to start off with is the picture options. So you will need to calibrate. As you see here, this is what my setting will look like. But out of the box, the haze that you get is somewhere like that. And it's pretty legendary. It's pretty damn bad. So if you don't want to have that haze, well, join my membership. It's five bucks. Snag the settings and get away from this ugly picture quality. Now, for the extent of the video, just to be dramatic, I'll leave it in filmmaker mode because that's obviously the reference accurate look that everybody wants to push on you. So we're just going to leave it there for now because that's pretty much whatever YouTuber is going to be showing you. Now, the picture modes that you can expect are vivid, which is overly blue. There's a lot of clipping in your highlights or brightest areas of your screen and your picture is going to be over sharpened. So that's not really viable. Now standard, we've already seen that. That's the one where I did all the settings and adjustments to, but that's pretty much inaccurate out of the box as well. We have energy saving, which is basically really dim and very blue. We have game mode and snapping into that, there's a bit of a delay and there's a good amount of motion jitters. It looks really blurry. It's very, very blue, very pale, very cool. Even for a snow scene, by the way. Snapping into sports mode. Again, more of the same. This is even more blue than the last profile. Like, they all look dead. There is no life to their skin at all. And to theater day, you finally see a little bit more warmth, but it's not accurate. It doesn't look very good. Now, when I say it's not accurate, I'm not talking in terms of what everybody else would say when they mean that word. Accuracy to every other professional calibrator means it does what the computer tells them to. Accurate to me means when I've looked at a person that looks like that in real life and I'm comparing that to this television, does it look similar? And the answer is unequivocally no. People do not look blue in the face and dead. And so for me personally, I think these modes, they're all kind of doa from anybody expecting any kinds of real accuracy at all. So if you are, curb those expectations. Now let's dive into, if you do get this TV, how you can maybe make it a little bit better. First thing you want to do is disable the automatic light sensor, okay? And always make sure local dimming is set to high because that will help you with the haziness. Now notice how it's on high and it's still pretty hazy. That's one of the bad things about this television. Traditionally, local dimming is supposed to fix this. And even if you start going lower, you're not actually having the reverse effect happen where it just starts getting darker and better. It just stays hazy no matter what you do. I can't stress that that's the biggest problem with this TV. So then we, of course, looking at our other options, we have our backlight, which you guys see, that's pretty traditional. Uh, the automatic light sensor, once you enable it, you have something called light shift, and then you can raise it up and make it a little bit brighter, but it's pretty much a dark room feature. It dims, and it doesn't really respond to ambient light. It claims that it does, but it really doesn't do a thing. And then, of course, you have your typical contrast, brightness, color, tint, sharpness. Now, apply to all sources and all that good fun stuff. Or you can apply to just the current source if you didn't want it to apply to everything. Of course, smart scene. I frankly have no idea when that activates or what it does because I've never seen a benefit from using it. So I really don't even recommend using that. You have, of course, your color temperature options, which you have low, mid-low, medium, and high. Now, high is going to be the coolest of the cool, but seeing how cool this color temperature is, it even in the lowest point, I mean, could you imagine iceberg blue on everything all the time? I mean, that's it's terrible right now. And I think that's one of the things that you're going to see as a reoccurring theme here. It's just, this TV is just really cool no matter what you do. Um, but you have options to try to make that better. Now, your motion presets are as follows. You have custom, film, clear, standard, and uh, smooth. Now under custom, you can adjust judder and blur reduction, and you can raise it all the way up to 10. I mean, it does a little bit, it's decent, motion is decent. It can be classified as good motion. Not great, just good. Um, good enough for most people, especially. This is called motion clearness. It is your black frame insertion technology, and essentially all it really does is flicker. It's not really usable and I don't really recommend you use it. So that aside, you have your noise reductions, you have your active contrast with your low through high options to set up. 
Dynamic tone mapping is exclusive to HDR, so don't worry about that. And filmmaker mode auto detection, you can toggle that on while in filmmaker mode, but it doesn't do anything because you're already in filmmaker mode. The color space, you have it set to auto or native. You don't really have a choice between either of those. I recommend going to native if you want more saturation and to see a little bit more kick behind the quantum dots. Um, but if you're trying to adhere to reference accuracy, use auto and stick to the washed out ugly color space that defaults with the TV. Um, as far as game response, that's the uh, ALLM feature. You can turn it on or on auto when it detects a game. I hate that feature, so I just turn it off. As far as free sync, you can turn that on or off. There's no real toggles to it outside of that. It's just pretty much either it's on or it's not on. That That's kind of like the only choice that you have, and there's no real in-between. So, you know, it is what it is there. Now, when you turn on FreeSync and you go to something like your motion enhancements, if you're not in game mode, you still have access to that. And what that ends up doing is actually smoothing out your frame rates a bit more. It's a nice little trick that I've been doing for a few years for a lot of my games, especially the 60 FPS games. It might not sound like it does a lot, but trust me when I tell you, it does make things just a bit smoother. So if you're a Hisense user, definitely try this out. Custom, uh, again, max out your sliders if you want, and then go into your your uh, free sync and then turn that on and then you're able to get like blazing fast frame rates and stuff like that it's really cool it's, i say blazing fast but it just really makes it look fluid um if you don't like the fluid look then turn it off and there you go blue light filter filter this year is new um it's a complete and total joke because when you turn it on everything turns green for some reason i don't know how they possibly could have thought people would have wanted that so i don't even mess with that feature i think it's a doa feature um, as far as the color tuner, I mean, you have all your same options. You have red through magenta, and you have flesh tone, which is exclusive to Hisense, which is an amazing feature. And this works like an HSL, hue, saturation, and luminance slider. And basically what it does is allows you to adjust the hue, saturation, and luminance of each individual color, as we are familiar with if we've done this before. If not, there you go. White balance adjustments, you have two and 20 point methods of calibration for those interested. Your gamma points are as follows. You have 2.2, or rather 2.0, 2.2, 2.4, BT1886. Those are your SDR gamma points. Now, obviously at the bottom, you see HLG and ST2084. Now, I have seen questions from people saying like, hey, I'm always locked in ST2084. Um, how do I get BT1886? You have to disable HDR at your source level if you're having the problem where you're locked into ST2084. Anytime you see ST2084, you are in HDR. So just disable it and then you can get the SDR gamma curve of BT1886. Now, under gamma calibration, again, another Hisense exclusive feature, it shows input level 5% and all the way up to 100% and then the gain level to adjust that as well. So pretty decent feature, but not everybody's going to use it. Um, again, it just depends on the person and their knowledge with this thing or this type of thing. If you don't really know how to use certain things, then it probably won't be a benefit to you. Anyway, as far as your screen options, you have widescreen, you have overscan, but those options are grayed out at the moment. As far as your sound options, you have standard mode, you have theater, you have sports, music, speech, late night, um, and then the Adobe Atmos speakers, and then you can choose the wall mount setup, which will defer to your backfiring speakers versus firing from underneath the TV. Then you have your advanced settings where you can go in and start doing more of the advanced stuff like equalizer and start messing with your, you know, EQs and all that to get better sound if possible. Not very possible on this TV, but you have that option either way. You can select your audio output options, again, TV speakers, ARC, Bluetooth, WISA, speaker, whatever you want, right? Um, and again, you have more options on how you want the audio out to work. So you can do auto, you can do pass-through, PCM, you can do Dolby Digital, you can do Dolby Digital Plus. So if, the, if, if there are those who were expecting something a little bit more, that's not going to be there in this particular device. But you do have a good amount of options. And of course, you guys know about Game Zone. I've been talking about that for a while. You have game information where you turn that on, and it'll tell you things like VRR, if it's on or not, ALLM, HDR, just general stats. Kind of useless, in my opinion, unless you're like trying to see how your games are like 
performing with your television, but there aren't real-time stats, so I don't really see the point. It's definitely not going to be for my PC users out there, something like MSI Afterburner. It's not like that at all. So you have a black level and white level that's independent from your contrast and your brightness level. And this is very useful for those who want to like get a little bit more in the black levels or a little bit more in the luminance. So like now, if you want a little bit more luminosity, just raise this up and things start getting much brighter. You want it dimmer, just lower it and things again start getting dimmer. You know, so you do have some options and getting a little bit more kick, but it's not as robust here. And again, it, it is what it is, but that's just what we can expect there. Um, under parental control, you have the usual options. As you guys see, you have channel blocking, program blocking, input blocking, things like that. So if you want to block things, you can. Uh, audio only is basically picture off. So this is a popular feature for OLEDs, but you can basically turn the screen off and that allows you to walk away from your TV and it not be a deterrent or a distraction. And it's very useful for people who like to fall asleep with the TV on to like something like ocean sounds or ambient sounds like live streaming on YouTube or something for like two hours or so or whatever. It's a really useful feature and it's something that I think more TVs should implement. But right now it's kind of one of those things that are kind of novel at best and people aren't really crazy about it, I suppose. If you need it, it's there. You have a timer so you can set when the TV goes to sleep after a certain duration of time. Uh, under advanced system options, Alexa service, store demo options through the store mode. Uh, screenless mode, again, I have no idea what that does. You can toggle it, but it doesn't really do anything. Um, it's something to do with uh, voice control features, so there you go. It'll show you that. Um, I don't use any of the Wi-Fi features or anything like that, so that's not going to apply to me. I use streaming boxes like PS5 or Xbox Series X or something like that. Um, and then you have your advanced control for control port options. You have your product registration, your e-manual if you ever get lost and you need help. You have content sharing. Again, you click on content sharing. It's already on. You can choose to do that or not. You can clear your cache if you need help. There's a help option. And then there's just general help. And that's the menu option. Now there is a little bit more of a trickiness to this because that's if you hit the menu button. But if you hit the settings button located at the top right of your remote, then you have the Google kind of settings that they have. And this will show you things like your inputs, all your active inputs. You click over to the right, you can rename these inputs, right? And then additionally, you have picture, you click on that. That'll activate all your picture settings like right there from the get. So. It is a way to get to your picture settings and not. I still recommend going through the menu mode because no matter what you do, if you hit picture here, right? Yes, you're in the picture settings, but you'll never see things like game zone, which give you additional picture options, such as this independent black and white level. So I would highly recommend just using the menu button anyway, instead of the shortcut way of going through the settings button. Um, and then of course you have the, the kind of, it's, you're going to have to have Wi-Fi for it to work. But essentially, you have the time and date and stuff like that at the top. And then if you click the settings button, this is going to be very different from pulling up the settings that will happen in your menu. So what I'll do is I'll lower down the uh, brightness of this entire scene here so you can see everything a little bit better. Probably making it way too dark, but you guys can hopefully see a little bit better. Now, as I was saying, this operates a little bit differently than just your menu button and it will give you a lot more options. So of course, as you see, you have your channel inputs, you have channels, stuff like that. And it's all the stuff that you'd find within Google and their unique menu. And again, it's a lot of the same stuff, your internet, you have uh, accounts, you have privacy options, all the apps that you have, things like that, all the permissions that you have if you want to restrict certain things, you know, security restrictions, you allow it to install apps that aren't really known, things like that you can do. Um, under system, your accessibility, which will give you access to a bunch of different features and stuff like that. Um, again, if you need accessibility, you know what that's all about. You have your about, which is where you have your system updates and things like that. Um, and then you click on system updates and all that, and it'll check for an update if you want it to. Um, I'm not on the Wi-Fi, so it's not going to make a difference for me. Your time and date, if you need to set that, language, keyboard, storage stuff. Um, it'll tell you your to total space and things like that, and obviously the breakdown of everything, like kind of like a phone, an Android phone. Um, ambient mode, which you need Wi-Fi to work, which basically is pointless. It's just like a little ambient mode. I think if you're watching a TV, you probably won't need that too much. Um, then, of course, you have energy, uh, power and energy, which will allow you to basically 
when you turn the TV on, it, it allows you to decide if you want it to go to the home screen or the last input that you used. This is important for those who like jumping in and just maybe accessing like Disney Plus or Netflix or whatever, just straight from the home menu versus going to a particular input. Um, energy saver, and then it'll tell you turn the TV off after how many hours for those being conservative with how much power they're consuming. Um, and then, of course, the power LED. If you want to turn off the power LED, you can do that. So when it's in standby, you can do that. Um, then again, you have all these various options that you can choose from and do. And it, it allows you to do a little bit, but not a whole lot. It's not totally robust, but again, you see the general options here. Now, system sounds, if you're sick and tired of hearing the clicking noise, just click this off and then those go away. And then under the advanced system settings, then you have things like Alexa service. And again, the stuff that I showed you before and the, it's kind of similar to the menu, but not really. And then under restart, you can just factory reset the entire TV if, you know, I just hate everything about this TV kind of thing. So there you go. So hopefully this helps you guys out. Um, this is pretty much it. Another really cool thing um, that I like about this TV in particular over other ones. I'm going to pull the menu up and back out so we pull up the EDID of the television. And then they give you a bunch of cool little information. Uh, let's see if it'll do it this time around. I'll go to input and I'll just select it. So maybe it'll pull up that way. Or maybe I'll have to actually go to home. We're at the home menu. Then I go to the input and then I'm going back. Okay, you can see like it's 4K, BT709, YUV420, like stuff like that. It gives you like a breakdown of like the color space that you're into and like, you know, the resolution a lot cleaner than it did on the last model. I really love the way it does it this year. So that's just one of the nice things about this TV as well. Um, but that basically concludes the walkthrough of pretty much all the things you can expect more or less from the menu. If you like these kinds of videos, smack a like on it and I'll do more of them. And until the next video, I'll see you guys later.